Hey everybody, it's Sandra Deluxe. Can I get a hair? Yeah! Microphone's broken. Yeah! So today we're doing the streets are calling me a uh, type of glam. This is a makeup look that I get a lot of compliments on even though it's not anything too crazy. I think it's just focusing the emphasis on other parts of the face so that your features come to life. Other than focusing on too much emphasis on the eye or the lips or anything like that, just doing subtle unique twists to certain areas so that you pop as a whole rather than oh nice eyes, nice lips or whatever. So this is something Thing that I've gotten a lot of compliments on in real life I haven't really like thought about posting it online because it's so basic but it does come together really well they call me to come back to the streets it's hot girl summer so if you want to see how to get this neutral kind of glam that keeps up really well throughout a long sweaty day then please stay tuned alrighty so first we're gonna start off with the unseen sunscreen by super goop awesome no flashback it's kind of like a primer too because it's clear but it's SPF 40, I really like it. Blends in nice and smooth, makes my skin feel nice and delicious. And I'm just gonna give myself a nice little massage in. I already had moisturizer on, I forgot to mention that, but anyways, you can't even see it. No white marks, nothing. Next up, I'm gonna go in with Gleam Melanie Mills, Body Radiance, and Rose Gold. It's actually called the Face and Body Radiance now, but just using that to add a little bit of glow to my skin. This is pretty moisturizing on its own. I actually did my moisturizer early on so that it would dry. I find with summer makeup, you don't want to put your foundation on when your skin's really wet. So something like this that's long wearing and also a little bit moisturizing, priming, blurring, and gives a glow, it's really great to put on instead of a heavy moisturizer. I'm gonna go into the Pat McGrath Labs Sublime Perfection Foundation in Medium Deep 22, and I'm gonna massage that on all over. Just like using my hands because it blends everything in nice and smooth. Just giving myself a little bit of love. I have a little bit of eczema on my neck, so this just carries down and blurs a little bit that little area. And also make sure when you're doing your sunscreen and your skincare that you're putting it on your neck as well. Next up, I have the Granola Huda Beauty Overachiever Concealer. I'm putting that on the highest points of my face a little bit. This is highlighting so that I'm bringing points out of my face. And I'm going to go in with Caramel Corn, which is a little bit more peach, to color correct my darker circles under my eyes and I put it on my nose as well just a touch and I'm going to start blending the peach shade first because I don't want the more yellow golden lighter shade of granola to mix in and dilute the color correcting effects of the caramel corn so I'm blending that out first making sure it's cute and then I can go in and start blending in the granola colors but I also do the center of my forehead just to bring it forward a little bit. I contour the outer edge of my forehead and also just a little bit on the chin so that I just look like I got some popping cheekbones and uh, bone structure, you know, to look a little less flat. Then when it's mostly blended in, I'll do a little bit on my nose, but not too much. Then I can go in to the granola shade and start blending that out because that is the lightest color and I didn't want to carry that all over the face. Just want to highlight my cheekbones doing that on both sides obviously this is a damp beauty blender sponge and it is twice the size i did a video not too long ago showing how to have your foundation look really bomb all day and that was one of the things i explained about having a really nice damp beauty blender that you ringed out really well get out all the moisture but it's still a big fluffy soft pillowy beauty blender not using it all raw dog and dry next up i'm going to take my dry as dip down fluid line by mac and i found a new way to stress myself out when i'm getting ready and that is by putting slits in my eyebrows i actually used to do this when i worked at mac i'd put three stripes on one eyebrow feeling all like adidas but now i'm seeing it's kind of coming back as a trend to put some slits so i'm like i could do that i did that 10 years ago why not so i'm doing my eyebrows like normal i also actually took my face shaver the little i don't know what it's called but it's like a blade on a stick <laughs> Sounds terrible, but it's like a facial razor, whatever. And I put little slits in my eyebrows to make it a little easier. I don't have much eyebrows to begin with, so might as well just have a good time, put some slits on it. And I'm just going from the bottom row of hair and kind of flicking it up. I find with this technique, it's almost better to not do so many stripes in the inner corners of your brows. Usually I'll try and do a bit more brush stroke hairs, but keeping it quite solid on the end, just so the stripes I'm making in there will be a little bit more visible. I tried to do fluffy brows and do the stripes and just look mad stupid. So I always start a little bit below where I want my bottom row of hair to be because I'm gonna sculpt it out after. And then I'm gonna go in with some 
hourglass brow gel and clear just to hold them in place it's also good to give your eyebrows a little bit of a trim too um, so that when you're brushing them into place they don't dangle all over the place. I'm going to take a little bit of a concealer and concealer by itself and I'm going to do my first swipe. Hopefully that's okay. I just open it up and I'm doing it past my eyebrow line so you can't really see where I stopped. It just looks like a gap and I'll kind of erase it afterwards on the top and bottom. I need to find a better angle to do my brows. Sorry, my head seems to be down a little bit. But also if you maybe make it a little bit wide, you can also go in with your brow gel and kind of fix it, you know. Pretty new to doing this style of brow again. So before when I do it like 10 years ago, I actually shaved off so much of my eyebrows that I could just do the swipe and not worry about it. I'd take a Q-tip, make a remover and remove the swipe. But uh, now I've got a little bit of hair, thank the Lord, all five strands of it. And that's how we're gonna do it. Two on one side, one on the other. This is also just something I've been playing around with, you know, haven't been playing around with many other things, but it's nice to switch it up sometimes. If you're doing this, you don't wanna actually cut your eyebrow hair, you can go over with a lighter eyeshadow primer that's more opaque and your concealer mixed together and that should block the hairs, but it will look a little bit more gray, so I'm just like, whatever, I've had so many eyebrows in my life, let's just chop them off. I'm gonna go underneath with the same snatching brush, which is ancient, and highlight under my brows and just clean it up. This type of brow too, again, it looks better when you have a sharper brow, more of a fake looking eyebrow, not so much a natural one, so that's why I'm really sharpening it, elongating it, and making sure it is nice and clean. Especially when you're doing something more of a natural look, I feel like it's nice to have intense or unique bits of your makeup that are still not the focus, so I have intense eyelashes and intense brows, which is gonna carry the look, as well as the highlighting and contouring. It's just like, hey, maybe I'm a unique girl, you know? Maybe I'm a good time, maybe I'm fun, maybe I like to do stuff a little bit off, you know? Anyways, let me just not change anything about my makeup routine and go into the Makeup Forever Pro Bronze Fusion 30M, that's my jam. It's an automatic habit of always putting some in my crease as my first transition color and the start of my contour process. I think a contour is a whole face experience. It's not so much just for your cheeks or your nose. Do it everywhere and it makes your nose contour and your cheek contour less obvious. And not less obvious as in you can't see it, but less obvious as in you don't just see two lines on your face or on the side of your nose. You just see a well balanced, structured, chiseled, mother loving face. Now this is one of my favorite products ever. This is the Nude Sticks Desert Sun Magnetic Matte eye pencil. It lasts so long underneath the eyes. I put it in the inner corners as well. I find when it's really hot and sweaty, I try to do the least on my eyes because I don't want to sweat it off. And this stays very, very, very well. I'm going to take my Dark Deep Mineralized Skin Finish. I've been using this for freaking over 10 years, I swear to. Blend that into my cheek. I'm not doing as sharp as a bronzer. I'm more doing a kiss of color so I look nice and tan and bronze as my body is because my face is very pale. And I'm blending it up a little bit more because I'm gonna mix my blush into that. And I'm just gonna swipe a little bit on my chin as well, give a little bit of that tan, keeping the bronzer on the bottom part of my chin so we don't take away from that highlight we did with the concealer earlier. Back in with my Makeup Forever Pro Bronze Fusion, I'm gonna take this Smith Cosmetics brush, another one I've been using for hella years. I'm gonna go down the sides of my nose, nice and tight, and then I always turn up my nose on the bottom shade it underneath there, and then give my nose a little bit of a scrunch to make a little dip. This is just self-decorating the nose and bringing out the structure. So same thing, not super intense, but it does really complement my cheek contour, my eye contour. Then I'm gonna take the Sublime Highlight Trio by Pat McGrath. I'm gonna do that on my cheekbones, just the same place we kinda did our concealer. And I mix all of the colors together. I love the little bit of pink, the little bit of gold and bronze mixed all the way together. Now for the inner and outer corners of my eyes, I'm gonna use middle and the pink shade, so the gold and the pink, so it's nice and bright. I'm gonna put that on the inner corners of my eyes as well as the outer corners of my eyes just to really make my eyes look big and open and this lasts really well if you're out in the sun, it won't melt, there's nothing to really melt. But it just gives a really nice opening for big cute eyes and then I just drag whatever's left over onto my lid for a very subtle 
highlight. That way if you get sweaty and you want to crease a little bit, like there's nothing really to crease, you know what I'm saying? But your eyes just look bright. The contour earlier just kind of gave a nice shadow and now we're highlighting the inner and outer corners. Next I'm going to take this Makeup Forever Artist Pencil, I'm going to go around my lips. Now this is similar to my lip color in the center of my lips, but as my lips tan, they definitely get like a little bit gray on the outside when they get darker, so I like to color correct a little bit by just taking a pencil that's a little bit warmer and similar to my lip color. Then I'm going to take the Fenty Beauty Slip Shine. I'm going to have to write the name in the description box because I forgot. And use that as a moisturizer slash touch of color. Next up, I'm going to take my Pat McGrath Divine Blush. I'll write the name of that in the description box too. And I'm going to go over top of my highlight. This is going to give really nice blurred color and rosiness to my skin but it's not gonna take away my highlight. It just looks nice and radiant, and I like to do it from my under eye outwards. Next up with the Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara. I love this mascara, I just think it's nice and volumizing, it's super black, and I probably need a new one because it's getting a little bit dry, but I don't know, I just be using stuff to the end, you feel me? Next up, I'm gonna take the Aurora Lashes by Roquel Beauty, and I'm just realizing this is kind of similar to the last video I posted, but it doesn't have a long review in the middle. I was on a struggle bus with this. I just glued this right to the middle of my mother freaking eye, and sometimes it just feels like that, but I try my best to let that dry a little bit so I can kind of roll it off, but I love these lashes, but these are amazing. Like they just wing out on the side. They're a synthetic lash. But anyways, if you just have some good faith, you can totally fix your little eye boo-boos if they're happening. So I'm just trying to peel off that glue so we can continue to have a good day. You know, we're not gonna let that take us down. We're still having hot girl summer. Next up, we'll do the other side. A little bit more success on this side. Thank you very much. Very excited about it. And I'm gonna wiggle it and pinch it as close as I can to my lash line. And I take that same mascara, the Bite Beauty Upswing, and I'm gonna put that on the bottom. And we are ready to go. All right, so that completes the look. Like, what do you think about playing up other areas of your face that help to bring out your strong points? Would you wear something like this? I always think that this is like super simple, but it's something that I get the most compliments on in real life. Would you wear it? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to share, subscribe, and follow. Love yourself, stay pretty, and I'll see you guys again in the next video. Take care.